Hi, welcome to the second part of the 10.1 screencast. So looking at the um, butane, as I was saying at the end of the first screencast, there's multiple structures possible for butane that you, you could put all four carbons in a row, or you could branch one carbon off the center carbon, have three in a row with one branch coming off. That's called a structural isomer. And also the OH can move around on the alcohol, both with ethanol and with butanol. It doesn't have to be on the end, although that's the way we've been perceiving it. So the idea of a structural isomer is when uh, you have compounds that have the same molecular formula, but their condensed structural formula, their actual structure is going to look different. So they have distinct physical and chemical properties. They'll probably be similar, but they are going to be different, uh, considered different chemicals. So then they're going to be given different names as well. So what I want to do is take a minute down here and draw all the possibilities for ethanol and then all the possibilities for butanol. And ethanol only has two possibilities. So that one's fairly quick. Remember, ethanol is when you have three carbons. And then we have an OH group. So it could look like this with the hydrogens filled in. Or my other possibility is I could have my three carbons and the OH group could be attached to the center carbon. And to name this is real simple. We simply use a one or two to indicate where that OH is. Um, you know, one would be called one ethanol to show the OH is on the first group. My second picture would be called two ethanol um, to show it's on the second group. With butanol, it gets a little more complex than that because with butanol, I can have four carbons in a row, and the OH could be here with my H groups. I'm just going to put the bonds here. I'm not going to draw the H's in. Um, or I could have four in a row, and I could have the OH off the second one. Now, if I put it off the third one, that's really the same as the second coming from the other end. But these would have slightly different condensed chemical form or condensed structural formulas. So this one would be CH3, CH2 twice, actually CH2 three times, and then OH, whereas this one would be CH3, CH2, CHOH, CH3. And again, we would name them differently. This one would be one butanol. The first one would be one butanol, and the second one would be two butanol, which we'll get into the naming. But we also have another possibility here in that the butane chain itself, um, the butyl chain, I should say, instead of being four in a row, it could be three in a row with the fourth down here. So now I have a possibility that the OH could be off of here. And then, of course, you have the hydrogens filled in. I also could have my structure like this, and the OH could be attached to that dangling carbon. And again, fill in your hydrogens. Or the third possibility is that the OH could be attached to the center one, which is also where the branch is. These are three different types of alcohols, and they would have three different names, which we're going to start looking at on the next slide. So naming, um, there's specific rules set up by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So organic compounds are named differently than we've been naming ionic and covalent compounds. And the first rule is you have to find what your backbone is or what R is. You have to find the longest straight or continuous chain of carbon. And as I say in earlier, what I tend to do is I look for how many CH3 groups there are, or how many carbons there are with three non-carbon atoms attached to it, because those are going to be N's. And then um, the other trick is if they've got it drawn out for you to go ahead and see how many carbons you can connect with your pencil without having to lift it up. So once you've determined what your R um, value is, that's going to give you the root of your name or what IB calls the stem of your name. And when you're naming them, you kind of, I write the name from the right side back to the left because you have to know the base first or the stem. So there's the different um, 
prefixes used, meth, eth, prop, but, I remember those with the uh, little saying, mice eat peanut butter, and then pen, text, hapt, oct, non, and dec, those fit right in with the ones I've been using in math for a lot of years. So then the second rule is you have to decide what your functional group is, and that's going to be the end of your name. So you've got meth, eth, but, whatever. What do you put on the end? Well, if it's an alkane group, it becomes methane or ethane or butane. If it's an alkene group, then the suffix becomes ene, and then you can see for alcohol, it's ol. For aldehydes, we take the beginning, and it's al. For ketones, instead of just one, we put anon. And for carboxylic acids, in a similar ma uh, manner, we put anoic acids. So you can see I've put the names there. For ketones, um, actually, ethanone is not even the first one. Propanone is the first one possible for a ketone. There just isn't anything as short as uh, methanone. Although there is a chemical called methanone, it's not truly a ketone. So you're going to have to be able to identify the functional group on structure diagrams, structural diagrams, and then come up with the names of them. So we're going to do some practice on that after we look at rule number three here. Rule number three has to do with the other stuff that can be attached. So besides having a functional group on the carbon backbone, I mentioned you can be have these you can have these side chains or substitutions. Side chains uh, a side chain is when you have another carbon group branching off. And so you could have one carbon branching off, um, a CH3 group, and that would be called a methyl group. You could have two carbons, an ethyl group, three carbons, a propyl group. You could even have four or five and then be called a butyl and a pentyl group. Um, halogens are another common thing to be um, substituted in place of a hydrogen. And they're just named floral, chloral, bromo, iodo. And then amine groups are also very uh, popular, NH2 being called amino. It's exactly what the name amino acid comes from. And then the OH group, which is a hydroxy group, which we see with alcohols. And then we also see the hydroxy group showing up with carboxylic acids, which we've looked at a few times this year. So a couple things with these three rules then is the position, which um, the functional group or the side chain or the substitution is attached to, is also shown with the number before the prefix name. So like 2-methylpentane or 3-methylpentane. And if there's more than one of the same side chain, then we use um, the prefix di, tri, tetra, etc. to show it's, you know, 2,3-dimethylpentane instead of just 2-methylpentane. So let me just look at these three that I have here. I think I've got space to draw these. Let me draw what these three structures would look like given their names. And again, I start at the end, I start at the right, I've got propane, which tells me there's three carbons, that's my longest backbone. And then the one, two, dichloral tells me that the first and second carbon each have one chlorine attached to them. And then propane means there is no functional group or the functional group is just hydrogen. So I can go ahead and finish drawing my compound by saturating it with hydrogens. So that would be 1,2-dichloropropane. If I had 1,1,1-trichloropropane, that's going to look a little bit different because if I go back to my root here, I've got three carbons making up the propane. This time I have three chlorine, but they're all on the first atom. And of course, my first atom could be the other end as well. And then I need to go ahead and fill in the hydrogens in all the other available spots there. So that is 1,1,1-trichloropropane. And then looking at the last one, 1-chloral-2-methylpropane. Again, I draw my root or my base there of propane. 1-chloral. I'll go ahead and put the chlorine here. And again, it doesn't matter which of the three positions because this is three-dimensional, so it's just perspective. And then 2-methyl means there's a methyl group attached here. A methyl group is a CH3 group. I guess I should draw this out as well. And then I fill in the remainder with hydrogens now that I've added the substitutions and the side chains. So that would be one chloral. 
Topic uh, one, ten one, also talks a little bit about esters, which we're going to do a lab on this. Um, esters are, are not a huge part of this, but they are an interesting family, and they commonly occur when organic acids react with alcohols, and they form a new group called an ester, because what happens is carboxylic acids have a COOH group at the end, Alcohols have an OH group at the end, and so when they combine, you end up with a COO group uh, trapped in the middle between two carbon groups. So you actually have two R chains. Um, you have the carbon backbone from your carboxylic acid, and you have the carbon backbone from your alcohol, and in between you've got this carbon with one oxygen double bonded and one bo oxygen single bonded, bridging the two R groups of the two backbones together. They're also known as organic salts. Many are what we consider fats and used to make soap. They're also used to make scents. To name them, you're going to look at the acid and at the alcohol group that are being combined, and you use the prefix for the alcohol group, and then you use the root of the carboxylic acid because, um, well, because that's the, the um, habit of it, the convention of it. So then um, you use A-T-E as the ending for an ester as the suffix. So carboxylic acid, if it was from uh, methanoic acid, would become methanoate. And then if it had been ethyl alcohol combined with it, I would say ethyl methanoate. So that's exactly the example I have here. Actually, I've got ethanoic acid with methanol, so I guess I have the reverse example. But if we look at this, if you have ethanoic acid, let's look at what's actually going on. Ethanoic acid is two carbons, and then ethanoic acid means um, my functional group is COOH. We haven't talked about this one yet, but it's in your reading. So then I've also got some hydrogens in here. So that's my ethanoic acid. If it combines with methanol, Methanol is just one carbon, so we don't have to worry about where the OH group is. So when these two combine, as I mentioned, this COOH group is going to get stranded in the middle, so that means this hydrogen is going to go away, and this OH group is going to go off, so that these two are going to bond between those two carbons. So if I scroll down and show you what this looks like, so I've rewritten here what we basically have had. I've left the H's off just so it's a little more clear what's happening with the functional groups. So when these two combine, my oxygens are still there from my um, carbonic acid. So I've got most of my carbonic acid still here. I need just the CH group from, um, the CH3 group from the methanol. And now I've got these two O's bridged between my two R groups. So this is forming an ester, which is represented as R, and then C, double bonded O, single bonded O, and then another R group on the other side. So you have to have at least three carbons for this to happen. And if I fill in the hydrogens here, I'd have three hydrogens off of this one. This carbon is full, and then I'd have three hydrogens off of this one. And now when I name this, um, as I said, you start with the alcohol as the prefix. So this is going to be methyl. And then the ethanoic acid becomes ethanoate. And that would be my new ester. And again, we'll do a lab with this. And esters are not going to be a huge part of this, but it's just one of the families that are commonly studied and used in organic chemistry. couple more naming rules real quick is two rules that IB didn't put into the book is that if you have multiple substituents, uh, side chains, substitutions, whatever, you list them in alphabetical order. So let's say you have both a methyl and an ethyl group. Ethyl would be listed first, then methyl. Even if it was triethyl, dimethyl, you go alphabetical order off of the uh, side chain name, not the prefix used. You use hyphens to separate numbers from words, and you use commas to separate numbers from other numbers. And then um, I've got kind of a summary sheet here of 
the main families that we're going to be studying in topic 10. So this would be something worth reading through, uh, looking at my hints like aldehydes. I remember even though they look a lot like an alcohol, it's an HO because the hydrogen and oxygen are each separately bonded to the carbon. So I think of it as